Eh. Doesn't want power bar. Power bar, get some protein. You want one? Hey, you go. Hi everybody, Sean here with the Tech Files Newscast. We've been putting Microsoft under the uh, microscope. And so I thought we would give them a little bit of good press this week. Microsoft announced Cortana, a Siri-like voice-controlled assistant at Build 2014. My favorite part? They seem to be keeping the name Cortana. Cortana, named after the AI who helps Master Chief in the Halo video game franchise, can make calls, send text messages, can take notes, set reminders, and set alarms. Basically, everything we've come to expect from a digital assistant. Microsoft said that they're also going to be making Cortana available to third-party developers, and they demonstrated this functionality with Facebook and Hulu. Sadly, Cortana just seems to be a little circle on the screen, and not the sexy, sexy AI that we remember from middle school. Amazon has officially announced their highly rumored set-top box. It's called the Amazon Fire TV and will debut at $99. So what all will you get with your $99? The set-top box will include streaming services like Hulu, Netflix, and Amazon Prime. As well, you'll be able to view photos on your television that you store on your Amazon Cloud Drive. There will also be voice recognition controls on the box, which they say you won't have to shout across the room to use. You know, people keep saying this is a jab against Microsoft, but I really have no idea what they're talking about. Xbox. Xbox. Jesus Christ, it's like having a kid. Settings. Settings. Turn off. Turn off. I'll just do it. Amazon is also debuting a $39.99 controller called the Amazon Fire Game Controller, designed to work with the Amazon Fire TV. However, there's no details about whether it's going to work for the PC or for a Mac. For now, I think I'm just going to stick with my trusty 360 controller, currently $5 cheaper than the Amazon Game Controller and the Apex of controllers. Yeah, it's pink. What? World Cup 2014! Woo! Go Team America! Wait, first match is against Ghana? Alright, we can... We... And then Portugal? Oh. Um, Germany? Check, please. Well, I'm pretty excited for the World Cup this year, and hopefully cheering for a team that will win. Why did you let me down, Netherlands? I understand that not everyone is very excited, especially in the US where it's not much of a big deal. However, everybody should be excited for the opening ceremonies. Why? This year, a Brazilian paraplegic is going to kick things off at the opening ceremonies using a brain-controlled exoskeleton to literally kick things off. The exoskeleton has been many years in the work and has been an international collaboration between Duke University in North Carolina, Technical University in Munich, and French researchers. The opening match is going to be happening June 12th at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time here in America. Scientists were able to create artificial yeast chromosomes that functioned and replicated just like natural yeast chromosomes. Scientists created the artificial chromosome by replacing many chunks of the normal chromosome with two to 4,000 base pairs of information at a time. They ended up with an artificial chromosome that was about 272,000 base pairs, as opposed to the normal 316,500 base pairs normally found in a yeast chromosome. For those of you who think this could lead to designer humans, you know, wings, sonar, gills, that sort of thing, humans have 3 billion base pairs, and the interconnectedness of our base pairs are far more complex than yeast. So while possibility, we probably won't see anything like that in our lifetime. So while we probably won't see designer humans, we can expect designer yeasts for things like brewing. Also brewing. And... Oh yeah. In our last bit of news, the first ever 3D printed house is being built in Amsterdam. The house is going to be a canal house and is being built using the Kammermacher. The Kammermacher is a German 3D printer that folds out into a pavilion. It's one of the world's largest 3D printers and is one of the only ones that could fit the needs of Hedvig Heinzmann and his team of architects from DUS Architects. The house is being created by assembling pieces. After the pieces are printed, they are then put together to form the structure. As well, the facade of the house is being built in a way to foster solar energy collection. It's like building with Legos on steroids. Minus, you know, the mood swings. 
That is it for the Technophiles newscast. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, and don't be afraid to tickle that share button, but be careful, he's a kicker. This episode was brought to you by these lovely people. You can also find us on social media at Technophiles Pod on Twitter, Facebook, Facebook.com slash Technophiles Podcast, and you can find us on our website, Technophilespodcast.com, where we post app reviews and we do our bi weekly podcast. That is it. I'll see you guys next time. Hey, yeah, bro. That's my game attack. Yeah, you can find me there. Oh, yeah, man. We can play some games, go to the gym. Oh, yeah, man. I've totally grown, too. Because everybody should see how pale and meek I am. Oi!